Namo wa. I'm sorry, friends. I could not see you for some time. I have been, I have been busy designing and editing a book with 2,000 pages, three volumes. Uh, details will come in time. Uh, I received this very interesting question from uh, Mrinalini ji. She was formerly teaching uh, mathematics at Triple IT Pune. Her question is uh, uh, on pronouns in Sanskrit. And she writes, uh, from what I've understood, idam is what you see across in front of you. Uh, so the thought of closeness or farness doesn't arise. Anything that is within our sight, we can say, I am gaja, this elephant, for lack of a better translation. Once out of sight, we say we can say sagaja, paroksha bhava. But today in most of the Sambhashana Varga and a textbook, they are teaching sa for far away, uh, which eventually takes away the paroksha. And this is done to fit in Sanskrit words in place of this and that. And they feel that the rhyming of sa and esha words can be used uh, to make Sanskrit teaching easy. Uh, so my question is, why should English decide how Sanskrit Bhasha is to be taught? Can you make a chalachitram on use of ayam, iam, idam, sa, sa, tat, esha, esha, etat, and asau, asau, and question mark for napum sakling. The napum sakling form is ada or adas. Uh, and she writes, she knows some sutras, adas tu viprakrishte, tadeti parokshe, so I don't know the sutras for idam and etat. Uh, so it's a it's a detailed question and there are several uh, important topics uh, uh, Mridanani ji raises. Uh, so let's say, let's talk about the four pronouns she's talking about. Uh, idam, etat, tat and adas. Uh, in English we have this and that. In Sanskrit, there are degrees of closeness and farness. It's just not just this and that. In fact, in English, in Old English, there was a pronoun uh, yonder to refer to something which is far away but within sight. Yonder is the sun. Uh, no longer used uh, or maybe used in some context, but mostly it's archaic. In Sanskrit, we have four pronouns, as she rightly points out. Uh, idam, adas, etat and tat. And what's the usage of these four pronouns? So the karika, which she says is, uh, is a sutra that she knows, it's, a, it's actually a karika. I'm not sure with what the origin is, but uh, this is how it goes. It's in a beautiful Arya meter. And it has two forms. The more common form is idamastu sannikrishte samipatarvartit chaita do rupam adasastu viprakrishte tadati parokshe ve janiyat and there's another form which says idamah pratyakshagatam samipataravarti chaita do rupam adasastu viprakrishtam tadati parokshe vijaniyat so what are these four pronouns used for idam is used for something which we can see which we can perceive it could be near it could be far but there's no specification uh, however it's something which is close by not very far so Sannikrishta. Although that sense is not there as per, per se in idam, but relative to these four pronouns, uh, which is relative to the other, other three, idam, etat, adas, and tat. Idam refers to something which is close by, uh, which is perceived and is relatively close to very far off objects or things or people. So, idam pratyakshagatam, which is pratyaksha, or idam visannikrishta, which is near. Sannikrishth means near and Pratyaksh means which we can see. So both uh, forms we see in the two versions of the Karika. Then the second pronoun is Etat. Idam, the, the forms are Ayam in uh, masculine gender, Ayam Gajaha, Iyam Ganga and uh, Adas, Ada in uh, neuter gender, Ada Phalam. The next pronoun is, uh, pronoun is Etat. Etat means something which is very near. There's no equivalent pronoun in English I can think of, but if I were to translate etat uh, with this sense that it has in Sanskrit, which is samipatarvarti, very close, relatively closer than other things or other people, then the word I would use is this right here, this man right here, this lady right here, this fruit right here, this fruit here, this here. That is what we can use for 
etat while translating etat so etat refers to something which is very close sami patarvarti chaita dorupam that is what the karika says the next one is uh, adas and adas is viprakrishta viprakrishta or viprakrishtastha as the amara kosha tells us is something far away or very far so uh, something like yonder in in old english yonder is the sun so uh, that's uh, what adas stands for asau in uh, masculine and feminine gender and adas or adha in the neuter gender and the final pronoun is tat tat is strictly speaking it is used for something which is paroksh not seen not perceived but in the mind or even if one is referring to things in the mind then far away uh, in time or far away in space uh, or far away from what we are currently thinking of so that is strictly speaking the usage of tat uh, so something which is not perceived not seen not thought of that is tat uh, now i'll give you some examples where these senses are seen for example idam idam is something which is pratyaksha or nearby so idam indraya idam namama whenever we offer a bali or an oblation or an offering we say idam brahmane idam namama so idam this thing this object uh, which we see and then for an example for etat so we'll go to the ram raksha stotram फलमूलाशिन उदात तापसौ ब्रह्मचारिण पुत्र दशरथ सेत भ्रातर राम लक्ष्मण एक पुत्र दशरथ से संधि बिकम्स दशरथ सेत एंड एक मीन दीज टू दीज टू राइट हियर दीज टू क्लोज बाय दीज टू वेरी क्लोज दीज टू हियर सो दट इज एष एक सो एष एष मैस्क्युलिन एष feminine esha and napumsak linga etat that is used for something very close samipatarvarti next pronoun is in the karika is uh, adas which is viprakrishta far away so the example is from the shatapata brahmanam asau va adityo brahma that far away sun is brahma verily is brahma so that is the shatapata brahmana statement uh and finally the example in this sense of sa which is paroksha so for this we'll go to the vairagya shataka of bhartri hari uh this book i bought in 2011 uh i still have the the receipt from motilal dunasi das uh i brought this i bought this in bengaluru jayanagar they had a bookstore which i think has shut down now so vairagya shatakam a beautiful verse verse number 42 सारम्यानगरी महांस नृपति सामंत चक्रम चतत पार्शे तस्विदिशत्ताश्चंद्रबिंबानना उत्सिक्त स राजपुत्र निवहस्ते वंदिनस्ता कथा सर्व यशादगा स्मृतिपथम कालाय तस्म नम सो द पोएट ऑफ भतिहरी इमेजिन्स और इज imagines himself to be or is uh, at the site where we have ruins uh, ruins of an old palace and so he imagines what all must have been here and he says saramya nagari that so here sa is the sense of paroksh i don't see it but they must have been i don't see it now saramya nagari that beautiful city some beautiful city mahan sanipati that great king and that uh circle of uh smaller kings uh, or samantas or uh, his sovereignty and near the king that assembly of scholars and those moon faced ladies tas chandra bimbanana and that arrogant bunch of princes and those bards and their uh, praises all of this has now become just a memory due to whom due to kala and to that kala i bow so it's a very uh evocative verse where it tells you the mahima of kala that everything everything comes to an end everything that is great comes to an end so that's the usage of sa however i must add that these are uh not always these senses for example sometimes these pronouns are used interchangeably and sometimes uh, they are used uh, 
in a generic sense also. For example, if you look up apte dictionary for others, so one of the meanings is that referring to a person or thing not present near the speaker. So that is adasastu viprakrishte. But it also says viprakrisht or paroksha. So referring to a person or thing not present or near the speaker. So has a sense of tat also. Uh, and also it says adas is however often used with reference to pratyaksha or sannikrisht objects in the sense of this here yonder. So sometimes these pronouns are used in other senses also. And for that, for example, sa. Sa is used for paroksha usually. But let's say raghuvamsha. A beautiful upama at the beginning of the first canto where Kalidasa says, uh, How can I describe the clan of Raghus? Uh, he says, uh, uh, First, he says, Mandah kaviyasha prarthi gavishyam yupahasitam pramshulabhe phalelo bhadudbahu rivavamana. I am a fool and uh, I want to seek, I, I seek the fame of poets and I'll be laughed at by everybody. Uh, just like a short person or a dwarf trying to reach out to uh, a fruit, uh, extending his hands to reach out to a fruit which is hanging on a tall tree, so which only tall people can access. So I'll be laughed at. But then he says, uh, uh, I'll uh, I'll have an easy easy passage uh, following the way of the old poets. And then he says, So hamajanma shuddhana maphalo karmanam. Asamudrakshiti shana manaka rathavartmanam. And then he says, Raghuna manvayam vakshe. So here Kalidas says, Soham. That me, or here the yat is not used. And in fact, there's a discussion on why uh, there's no need of yat here, citing Mammata, which is present in this edition by Chokhamba uh, of Raghuvamsha with Sanskrit commentary. So here Kalidas is not using it in the sense of paroksh, but in a generic sense that. Such a person, I. So uh, in these contexts where such a person who has been described before, uh, the yat is missing, but that is also used. So in these senses, it may not refer to something that is paroksha. Uh, so these are the nuances. Uh, to repeat, uh, the general rule as per the karika is, idam is for something which is near or visible, perceptible. Uh, Etat is for something which is very near, very close. Adas is for something which is far away, like yonder in English. And Tat is for something which is Paroksha. So yes, English should not be the benchmark to teach Sanskrit pronouns. They should be taught in using the Sanskrit karikas and sources. Uh, and uh, such nuances should be taught, uh, even at a basic level when we are teaching pronouns. These nuances should be at least told to the students so that they know that yes, we say this and that only for convenience, but really uh, the sense, the nuance is something else, where etat is something which is very close, something you can, so some, some books say something you can touch with your hand or, or hold with your hand. Uh, that's not what the karika says, the karika just says samipataravarti, very close or closer to other things or other people or other entities. Uh, etat, uh, idam, as I said, is for something which is visible or close. Uh, Adas is for something which is far away, but still you can see it. And Tat is for something which is Paroksha, which you cannot see, which you cannot perceive. Uh, however, in certain cases, these pronouns are also used interchangeably. So there's uh, just like uh, the English word uh, fruit and vegetable. Botanically, tomato is a fruit, but in English we say it's a vegetable. So uh, there's a sense in English and there's a sense when it's particularly comes to botany or uh, science. So similarly, when we make the distinction, uh, there's a distinction between tat, etat, adas and uh, idam. However, sometimes they're also used interchangeably and that's when they're the that generic sense, not the specific sense which uh, the karika denotes. So that was a discussion on uh, pronouns. I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next video, namova.